In this video, we'll talk about Identity Federation. Identity Federation is related to identity management, where we have a centralized identity provider. This removes the need for redundant user account information, and it also gets configured to trust relying entities. A relying entity, for example, might be a web application server that we will authenticate user access to. Resources are configured to trust the identity provider. And again, that's an example of a relying entity such as a web application. So this is often also called a relying party. And normally what's done is the public key from a certificate or key pair used by the identity provider is made available to the relying party. Applications don't perform authentication. Instead, they forward the authentication requests from users to the trusted identity provider for which they now have a public key. So the identity provider then sends a digitally signed security token to the app after successful authentication for the user or device. Now, the identity provider's private key creates the signature. Apps have the public key that's related so they can verify the signature for authenticity. Identity providers generate security tokens. This is often referred to the specific component on the identity server as a security token service or STS. Security tokens can contain claims about users or devices. Claims are assertions that are consumed by apps. So an example might be a date of birth, the department a device resides in, a user's email address, and so on. The identity provider is also often referred to as a claims provider as a result of this. This is often used for web single sign-on SSO for internal or public cloud applications so that users don't have to keep providing the same credentials even though they're connecting to different apps. There are many benefits to using Identity Federation, including a reduced cost because we have a single central identity store. Reduced complexity for the same reasons. Enhanced security because we're using digitally signed tokens. More accountability because we have a central definable point where we need to track user account activity. It also facilitates on-premises to cloud resource access as well as business to business resource access. Let's take a look at the communication flow with Identity Federation. Pictured in our diagram in the center, we've got a user station with a web browser. On the left, we've got the identity provider, otherwise called the claims provider. And on the right, we've got the web applications, which are otherwise called relying parties. In transmission number one, the user in their web browser attempts to connect to a web application. Now, the web application is going to be configured to trust the identity provider. So in transmission number two, the web application will send back a notification to the user, essentially redirecting them to the identity provider. Now that might come in many different forms, including an HTTP redirect. So in transmission number three, the user web browser then, for example, uses that HTTP redirect to connect to the identity provider where the user is then prompted to provide credentials. So assuming the user provides the correct credentials in transmission four from the identity provider, we would have a digitally signed token that might contain claims, if it's configured for that, that gets sent back to the user station. Now that could come in many forms, including a web browser cookie. So now we would have a cookie, essentially a signed security session token, that is in the possession of the user on their station. So transmission number five would be the user station web browser sending that token, which could be a cookie, to the application, which authorizes the user to use the application. Now on a large scale with many web applications, this model makes a lot of sense and makes things much easier over the long term. Common Identity Federation standards include OAuth, this is the open standard for authorization, and it gives us the ability to sign into a third-party website after signing into something like Google only once. SAML is the Security Assertion Markup Language. 
Common Identity Federation products include Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services, which is usually called ADFS, Shibboleth, which is an open source SSO solution, and OpenID, which is Internet SSO or single sign-on, where you authenticate once to OpenID and you are authorized from there for multiple websites. In this video, we talked about Identity Federation.